Hey guys, it's time for another little rant from me. Another rant about school. People seem to like these rants. And you know what? Our school system is so messed up. And I have a lot of built up anger over the years. So, you know, it's time to vent. Because that's what we do on YouTube. So, Viper6390 asked me, What are your thoughts on zero tolerance policies in school and in school and out of school suspension? That's actually, well, three different questions there. But you know what? Let's tackle zero tolerance first. When the term in general, zero tolerance, pops up, you can be completely sure that somewhere down the line, there is a dumb ass moron responsible for. For that rule. What does zero tolerance mean? I guess it sounds good at first. It kind of sends the message that, you know what, if you screw around, no questions asked, you're going to get in trouble. But what it does is that it just delivers punishments way out of proportion to whatever happens. Why would you want to give a blanket punishment to just about anything that someone bad can do instead of actually using your brain to choose a punishment for what is you know necessary for whatever bad thing happened in general in school there is just a ton of bs involving zero tolerance i remember back in elementary school this was not labeled as zero tolerance at least not to me although i was in grade school so they probably didn't uh, use big words like or big phrases like zero tolerance, but I remember there was a time when a small scuffle, I was not like the uh, the big kid in the classroom, but for whatever reason, someone knocked down like my blocks, and this is, this is a thing that happens all the time, it was like first grade or kindergarten, I think it was second grade actually, it was like after lunch playtime or something for 20 minutes, some kid knocked down my blocks. It might have been like Legos or it might have been some cheap knockoff. And kids always do this sort of thing. No problem, whatever. Although then I r retaliated by knocking his down. Now, this also happens all the times. I mean, who really cares? I think it was actually time to clean up as well. So this was not like unheard of. This was not like anything bad. I didn't really care at this point, but th the person whose blocks that I knocked down just happened to be the kid who was like on Ritalin and all that and was the classroom dumbass who likes to freak out over everything and flip desks over when he gets mad and all that stuff. Kid turned out to be kind of cool after he sort of chilled out. But regardless, this just pissed him off, and he decided to start chasing me around the classroom. And so I bolted to get away from him. I doubt he was going to pummel me, but you know what? When someone comes at you who's a little bit angry, you try to avoid that person. I'm not like a big, hey, let's fight over any every uh, single thing. So I did probably two laps around the classroom. And then the teacher stepped in and said, what are you kids doing? What, what happened? And it was completely clear that nothing that I did was actually wrong. Um, and this kid was chasing me. I doubt he would have, like, beaten me up or anything like that, but it was, of course, not something you're supposed to do. Run around the classroom. And so what happened, we both got in-school suspension for a week. Why, why did I, the victim in this scenario, get in-school suspension for a week over this? This is completely retarded. Here's another example. There was a time where I, for whatever reason, you know, when... I was outside and I decided to pick up a little twig. I th this is this sounds stupid. There's like no purpose for this, but you know when you're in like third grade or whatever, you see something on the ground and you just decide to pick it up. It was a little twig, probably about 3 inches long. Now, for whatever reason, another kid decided that they were going to take this from me. A 3 a 3 inch twig. It might have even been 2 inches not even remotely harmful to anyone and some kid he decided he was going to take it from me and in the process of taking it from me he decided to tackle me i did not provoke this person in any single way but he decided to jump on me and in fact i think this was no, I believe it was just one kid. And so you know what? I get tackled and we both get the exact same goddamn punishment. Another week of in-school suspension. Why? Because I was playing with sticks. What the 
fuck. Oh my god, it is so retarded. It, <laughs> this is like the most dumbass story that I have ever told, I feel. But, yep, that's how I got my in-school suspension once again. And these are just really uh, tiny examples of zero tolerance at work. But there are many, many bigger instances that I've heard of where someone does something, you know, slightly bad. But, oops, slap it with the zero tolerance. Why is zero tolerance bad? Because you do not... The people in charge decide to forego any thoughtfulness and just throw blanket policies. Wouldn't you think that it would be much more smart for these people to actually take each instance in its own unique consideration and then use that to determine the punishment? Wouldn't that be fair? Why is zero tolerance ever used? Do we uh, throw someone in jail for anything between... Uh, pushing someone to killing someone that's sort of like zero tolerance how that would end up working in the real world no that's retarded so why should the baby things and the extreme things be punished in the exact same way in schools that is completely stupid Luckily, there were no big instances like this at my school although just in general when you hear someone there were a couple times where I got sent to the office, usually because I was either defending myself or just something really small and minute that was provoked of me, and I wasn't, like, perfect or anything like that. And every once in a while, you try to reason with the person who's, you know, administering the punishment, and sometimes it works, too. I always found it kind of ridiculous how there were kids who were just they're good with their mouth, and able to either talk down or talk their way out of punishments. And that's sort of a life lesson in itself where you see that happen. And so you need to, as a kid, sort of take in the fact that life is not fair and that sometimes you do need to use your mouth to get ahead. But whenever someone says, well, if I did this for you, I would have to do it for everyone. And this, is, this has to uh, do with things that aren't even me getting in trouble or even a, an example would be, I was at a concert one time, an outdoor concert, and there was an entrance that was about 50 yards away or so. But in order to get to that entrance, I would have had to cross like a, a, a part of the ground that I was not supposed to enter without having a badge or whatever. And so in order to meet my friends, I tried to start walking over there and then some, you know, rent a cop decides to stop me. And I ask, come on, why can't I just walk over there? He's like, well, you know, I, I can't allow that to happen. You could sneak in or whatever. And I was like, well, you know, you could watch me. And he's like, no, no, I can't allow that. And I was like, well, why don't you walk with me over there? He's like, well, if I allowed you to do that, I would have to allow everyone to do that. And you know what? I just straight up asked the guy, yeah, and what better things do you have to do? God forbid you walk me and maybe three other people over to the other entrance. What the fuck are you doing that's so important? Nothing. And I tried to reason with the guy. I didn't actually swear at him. But you know what? Reasoning with idiots is sort of like talking to the wall. It just never works out. I realize that I'm kind of like the punk kid. But you know what? What the hell are you getting paid? Just let me walk over to my friends instead of having to do the hour walk around the entire goddamn fair to find the entrance where I don't even entirely know where the hell I'm going. Things like that and things like... Trying to explain to a teacher why you were unable to do something and pe the teacher will go, well, if I made this exception for you, well, then I would have to make it for everyone. Well, then just fucking make it for everyone or you know what? Use some of your goddamn common sense and make individual judgments. You do not need to rule out everything. <sighs> so I think I pretty much covered that in school and out school s suspension. I think it's more of a shaming thing. Out-of-school suspension, I would have loved it if my in-school suspensions were instead out-of-school suspensions. Because really, why would you punish someone who obviously does not want to be in school by making sure that they stay out of school? That's just stupid and silly. In-school suspension, 
If you're going to use it, do not send me there for the dumbass reasons that I was sent there. I was not a troublemaker or anything like that. Not a significant one. Occasionally, you know, you get into little debacles, but nothing major. I guess there there is a use for suspension in general. It is just not used efficiently at all. So that's my take on all that. Let me know what you guys think of all this BS. Thanks for watching.